Hi everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful day at Tech Exeter. Um, I'm Lissa, I'm from Cracker Marketing, and today I'm going to talk to you about how you could be alienating your audience by not embracing intentional inclusivity. Um, so hello, I'm Lissa, the founder of Cracker Marketing, and we're a marketing agency in Cornwall who specialise in working with tech companies. Um, whether that's AI or React or traditional software development or DevOps, there's some really cool people we're working with um, globally. <laughs> so I love marketing and I love tech, but I'm also really, really passionate about diversity and inclusivity. So um, I'm excited to be talking to you about it today. Um, but yes, networking, the important stuff. <laughs> um, that's my Twitter handle, at Lissa Crump. Please feel free to tweet any questions you have during my talk and I'll respond to them all afterwards. Or feel free to tweet gifts at me. Um, I love a gift. You might be able to tell that by the end of this talk. There's one or two involved. Um, but this year's Tech Exeter conference is all about access, which is a fantastic theme. I got really excited when I saw that published. Um, which is why I wanted to talk to you about inclusivity. But first of all, who is this talk for? And I'm going to say I think it's for everybody. <laughs> and normally in marketing, I'm always saying you can't speak to everyone at once because then you end up speaking to no one. Um, but I really believe on this one occasion <laughs> that everyone will walk away learning something from this talk that they can then put into action. It's really important that everybody is paying attention to inclusivity and I feel like the conversation around diversity and recruitment is happening a lot more within tech companies in the southwest now um, and lots more conversations about diversity internally but I think there's still quite a way for us to go with diversity and inclusivity in our marketing and communications um, so I'm not here to tell anyone off or say you're doing it wrong, just to hopefully um, inspire you to make some changes, positive changes that will make a really big difference to your business and to your team. So first of all, let's talk about what is inclusivity. <laughs> it's wouldn't it be a talk about a dictionary <laughs> definition of a word. Um, Inclusivity is the practice or policy of providing equal access to opportunities and resources for people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalised, such as those having physical or mental disabilities or belonging to other minority groups. And you might be thinking, hold on, that sounds a lot like diversity. Like, what is the difference between the two? And there is a really important distinction between diversity and inclusivity. Diversity is the state of being diverse or having a large variety. Inclusivity is the practice or policy of including people who might otherwise be excluded or marginalized. The distinction is that diversity is the people and inclusivity is the mindset. A team of one is not diverse, but it can be inclusive. Someone with an inclusive mindset welcomes diversity. Um, so I hope that makes sense because the difference between the two is, is very important but quite nuanced um, and it will help if, if you understand that for the rest of the talk. Um, so I live in Cornwall and it's one of the least racially diverse places in the UK, like it's shocking. It is 98.2% white, which is mad. <laughs> um, so it's really hard to be diverse in your internal teams in Cornwall. Um, but I think it's really important that we don't judge people on how diverse we perceive them to be. For example, two white men could find a tech company and then their first two hires are two other white men. Looking at that, you might think, oh, they're not diverse. Maybe it's not the right place for me to go as a woman or someone of color. It might be, it might put you off, but you could be wrong as it is hard in a predominantly white place to have a, a racially diverse team, but you can still be inclusive. Um, so we need to look at how they act. Are they allies? You know, how do they behave? Are they welcoming and supportive and inclusive? Um, and if a team is inclusive, as it grows, it will naturally become more diverse. Now, also, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Some people are not diverse because they're just really toxic. 
I understand that and yeah that's definitely true but we need to look deeper into people to try and understand if they're inclusive and the place we will look for this is their messaging their communications their marketing is that inclusive um and often we tend to use people like us in our marketing and messaging and there's a number of reasons for that sometimes it feels more authentic sometimes we don't have a budget to pay for stock photography or hire models so we just gotta take pictures of our existing team uh sometimes people just don't think about it uh which is a, a complete privilege to have but that can be the case so whether or not it's malicious a lack of inclusivity in your messaging um it's putting people off it's losing you money it's stopping people from buying or working with you so it's really really important that we address that um so why is inclusivity important your target audience wants to see you see themselves in your content but they also want to know that you see them that you understand them and their needs but it's also not just about them. What's really interesting, what we're really seeing is a growing trend in consumers only wanting to work with people that are welcoming of everyone, inclusive of everybody, not just them. So this great survey was done and it shows that 64% of the people took action after seeing an ad they, they thought they considered to be diverse or inclusive. And then those percentages again were higher with some marginalized groups, millennials, black people, Latino people, people from the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, so it's not just people wanting to see themselves represented now, they wanna see that that's happening for other people, which I think is ace. Um, and it's like really important that like, if you have not been part of an underrepresented demographic, it is hard to really understand how it makes you feel when you see yourself being represented, how powerful it feels when you see yourself being represented. Um, as a queer neurodivergent woman who's plus size, I don't see myself represented a lot. I see it growing and I spend time in the places where I see myself being represented. But a lot of mainstream, you know, people, I, it's just not there. Um, you know, not feeling seen, not feeling understood, really sucks. And don't get me wrong, I am so privileged, especially being a white woman, like, there are things, you know, but it's interesting when you do have a moment of feeling seen. Um, so I'm a big fan of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And in Avengers Endgame, there's this one clip where all the women come together for this moment in this big battle and it's powerful and it's wonderful and I feel like a badass watching these women like it actually was emotional to watch it the first time and what's also really interesting is that scene was slated so much online by men who said it felt fake it felt forced it wasn't real they just didn't like it and that's so often the case when things aren't for you you don't see the value. Um, but that scene was was for the female gaze rather than the male gaze. And most films are done for the male gaze. So when it's something for the female gaze, men don't get it a lot. Um, I just want to show you a bit of that clip in case you haven't seen it. Uh, it's a little bit violent. So if that's not your thing, look away for a few seconds. Um, Peter Parker. Hey, Peter Parker. Got something for me? <laughs> How are you? She's got chills. <laughs> I'll pause it there. Um, 
I can just so much the whole film, but I'm here to talk to you about some stuff today. So, how can I be more inclusive in my messaging? Um, is a really, really good question to ask. You know, it's it's incredibly important to be authentic. As with all your marketing, I talk about this a lot. Um, I mean, if you want to know more about authenticity in your marketing, please check out my website, studiokraken.co.uk, especially the content around why we say no to vanilla. Um, and we talk about authenticity and, and how that helps make you money. <laughs> but it really cannot be underestimated. If people feel like you're being fake or performative, it will totally backfire. Um, I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But you need to be real. Um, you need to be including people because you want to be inclusive. You need to keep an open mind and an open heart. And I know that sounds a bit warm and fluffy, but you do. And you need to constantly be evaluating what you're doing and make sure that it's data driven as well. Um, last year, I did a talk about data driven marketing at Tech Exeter, which was really cool. Um, I'm not sure if they've shared that footage online, but you might be able to watch that back. But data-driven marketing is really really important um especially when you're looking at inclusivity if you're making a product for a specific demographic say for example you're making a chairlift you're probably marketing this to old people you'd think that makes sense and that's logical but you need to make sure that within those people represented in your marketing imagery that there are older people, different races, people from the LGBTQIA plus community um, and younger people with disabilities because they'll be using these chairs too. And I can't think of a single chairlift and try not to say the brand <laughs> single chairlift advert I've seen that showed younger people with disabilities use it's always older people and you're excluding a massive market for you of people that would buy your product and if they saw themselves represented um they would probably have a lot more brand loyalty to you and be a lot more invested in using you um it's really important to remember that this isn't a checkbook exercise you can't go done I'm inclusive it has to be constantly reviewed and evaluated and the thought always has to be there every time you're pushing commit on a new campaign you need to be assessing is this inclusive enough are we alienating people and that might sound really overwhelming but please don't get overwhelmed with it um, you don't need to change everything you've ever done at once you can start with new campaigns and then work your way back through um, yeah, don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> um, so I want to talk to you about a really bad example. Of <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about this before. But I just find it so hilarious because it's so bad. So Bic, who make pens, created this Bic for her range. Um, pens for women. <laughs> so everyone went mad. Like... Here are some reviews from Amazon, which I just want to share with you because they're hilarious. Can these pens be bought individually? I only intend to write things until I find a man and get married. So it's a waste of my hard earned secretary salary to buy the whole pack. <laughs> the best thing about this pen, it's so stylish, tucked behind my ear while I'm perched on the corner of my boss's desk flirting with him. <laughs> I was disappointed to find that only one fifth of the pens I received were pink or maybe more, I can't do maths. <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. I was trying to buy these pens so as not to callous my porcelain hands or chip my pretty pink princess nail polish while writing the daily entries on love, loss, muffins and mother top, muffin tops in a sticker covered diary. Okay, there's more. I And I also trimmed down how many I wanted to send, but put in this presentation. If you're looking for something to do, go look at the reviews because they are all absolutely ridiculous. But it was a ridiculous product. There are so many things that as women we need and we need to be seen for. Creating a for her range of pens was really, really not it. Um, and there's a massive growing distaste for brands who, during Pride Month, just change their logo to have the Pride flag and are like, 
boom, we're done. That's not enough. That's not proper allyship. If you are saying that you support Pride and the LGBTQIA plus community, then you need to be, you know, actually supporting it. Are you supporting your employees? Um, are you seeking diverse hires? Are you addressing pay equality? Are you contributing to organizations that support LGBTQIA plus rights? Or are you supporting people that are actively anti? Um, because if you're not, it's just performative. And I know this year in particular, I saw a lot more um, noise online about people being upset with brands for just sticking a, a rainbow logo up and feeling like they've accomplished something. Um, so, you know, unless you're actively supporting them, I'd stop. It's, it's also really important to know your customer. And I know we're giving examples of when things could go wrong, but like, don't panic. <laughs> um, an effective, inclusive campaign starts with understanding your customer and the marketplace. You know, you need to look at what's culturally and emotionally meaningful them, for them, what's appropriate, what might offend them, um, what are they experiencing in their lives and how can that, what you produce resonate with that and help them with that. And it's totally fine to not have all the answers. You can ask the questions, you can ask people. Um, and I think people think often that market research is still a group of women putting on lipstick behind a two-way mirror, um, thinking of mad men there. <laughs> and it's, it's not, it can be really collaborative. It can be really uplifting. It can be really powerful. So, you know, find avenues of speaking to your target audience and target customer or existing customers and ask them what they think, you know, is your social feed resonating with them? Is the images, on your website you know do they feel represented is the language okay um to take the time and ask the questions um so yeah take the time to understand everybody you don't even understand me so i want to give you some examples of inclusivity and marketing now i've talked about some things where it wasn't so great I want to talk about some things where it is good. So Burger King did this advert. Let's have a look. Invited impossible fans to the opening of a very special restaurant. Tonight we are at the grand opening of the Impossible Burger restaurant. I love Impossible Burgers. I hunt them down. I camped out at to have the Impossible Burger. I have pictures if you want to see. And it feels like a experience in something big. And we had some great news for them. Yep, it's not an impossible restaurant. I don't know. I might be disappointed. I might I might be excited. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this. I've been stalking Burger King. The Impossible Whopper is now available in New York City. Yes, but no. The Impossible Whopper is going nationwide. <laughs> it tastes the flame grill. It's like perfect. We wouldn't have it any other way. This is incredible. I'm not going to lie to you. It's here. It's here and it's in every Burger King everywhere. Yes, the Impossible Impossible Whopper is now available nationwide. You too can go to any Burger King near you and try the Impossible Whopper with a patty made from plants. No beef. Get it while it lasts. Only at Burger King. So, um, <laughs> Tony gave that away by telling you it was Burger King at the start. Sorry, guys, <laughs> if you haven't seen that. Um, and I know some of the acting in there is a bit stilted, but this product is catering to vegetarians to vegans to people that don't eat beef whether it's just religiously or dietary or just how they want to live their life they are finally getting something for themselves um and also the casting in the advert it feels effortlessly diverse like it feels real like real people a bit of the acting was a bit stilted but you know you get the idea this is a massive change from Burger King's normal comms to really welcoming other people in and i love a burger so clearly i'm a fan um, we invited impossible fans so let's look at this one from etsy what's the name again it's shiori what shiori adam emily and then sh um shiori Shahori, thank you. That's great. Shahori. Yeah. Yeah. I really love 
I love that. Um, and also, I should point out, my my name is Lissa Fay, so F double E with a circumflex on the first E. And I, obviously, as a child, never grew up having my name on anything. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but. Um, and actually, I have a lot of problems impacting my name on online forms. Like, this is an accessibility problem. It Sometimes I use them and it says it has to be a real name. <laughs> but it doesn't like the hyphen and it doesn't like the circumflex. So it says it's not a real name. And that really invalidates me as a human because, you know what, it is. <laughs> and other forms, I know, I know friends whose surname is you, so why are you? And they say, no, your surname has to have more than three letters in it to be a valid name and that's a massive part of the population that have surnames with two letters that are then being told again that they're not valid by these forms so it's really important that people are paying attention to these sorts of things because I know if I'd seen this advert as a 10 year old girl and I could have had my name on something that would have been incredibly special and meaningful to me because it just didn't exist um, so the next one I want to show you is the Savage Fenty or Savage X Fenty um, show. It's incredibly powerful. And Rihanna obviously is a musician first and foremost, but she is really changing the game. During this fashion show, they have trans women, plus size women, drag queens, all ages, races, shapes and sizes. Everyone is represented in this show. Um, and it comes as like a real big middle finger to Victoria's Secret, who still just have the tall, skinny, predominantly white woman um, with the kind of really unattainable figure and a really actually quite transphobic. There's been a lot of stuff in the press about them. Um, I have read recently, actually, that they're really changing things up and they're finally listening. But I don't think they would have done it if they hadn't seen how successful Rihanna was with this. Um, and Rihanna also dropped a makeup line, Fenty Beauty, and instantly released 40 Shades of Foundation, um, which is unheard of in the beauty industry. And that's so that every skin tone has a foundation that will work for them. And there are brands that have been around for 40, 50 years that only have 10. Can you imagine every skin tone in the woman, for women in the world trying to fit within 10 shades? It's just really not inclusive and their reasoning was it wasn't financially a good idea businessly <laughs> that wasn't a real word <laughs> um but that it didn't make business sense so they wouldn't do it and rihanna was like hold my bit i'm gonna drop 40 shades at once and make loads of money and really really change the game so she's doing in crazy crazy things for inclusivity and let's watch a bit of the um, fashion show warning it's women in lingerie if you don't like that please look away <laughs> So hopefully that short clip shows you a bit more. Um, I think the, the whole show was about available on Prime, Prime Video. So if you want to watch it all, it's available. Um, I re highly recommend it. It's a whole performance. Love it. Um, so let's go on to my final thoughts um, for this. Like I really hope this has given you things to think about and a desire to be more inclusive. Um, uh, a few years ago, I gave a talk about diversity in tech and why it was really important at another um, event. And afterwards, someone I knew, a white man working in the tech industry, 
came up to me and said that he disagreed with a lot of what I said and that as a white middle class man he was the most <laughs> discriminated against demographic and had the hardest time and that's nothing short of delusional to be honest <laughs> um yeah it's <laughs> in my experience it can be hard for people to kind of understand how other people feel and how the world makes them feel um when actually he's one of the most privileged demographics there are available um and like I, I'd like to talk about privilege for a minute actually because privilege doesn't mean you've had an easy life and that you've had no struggles I think that quite often as privileged people we think that people are diminishing our struggles when they call us privileged which is not the case at all it just means that for example white privilege white privilege means that we've benefited in life from our skin color um it means we don't experience additional hardships or judgments just because of our skin color um which we are so incredibly lucky for and another thing I think I should mention here as well, when people say, oh, I don't see colour, that's actually incredibly offensive and we need to stop saying that because we're invalidating people of colour's experiences and who they are by saying that. Um, it's saying I'm choosing to ignore a part of you because it makes me uncomfortable. Um, it sounds like I don't see you and we're talking today about being inclusive and showing people we see who they are. Saying I don't see color is saying I don't see who you are. Um, I don't care about your experiences and where you're coming from. It's an important part of people's identity and dismissing it um, shows a lack of empathy and ignorance. Um, it's so important for us to use our privilege to become allies and I know I touched on being an ally before, but I want to go into it a bit more in depth here. An ally is someone who actively promotes and aspires to advance cultural inclusion through intentional, positive and conscious efforts to benefit people as a whole. It's a process of building relationships built on trust, consistency and accountability. Every one of us can be an ally and every one of us should be. White women can be allies to people of color. Men can be allies to women cis people um, or cisgendered which describes people whose gender identity matches their sex assigned at birth um, we can be allies to members of the lgbtqia plus community able bodies people can be allies to those with different abilities economically privileged people can be allies to those who are not there is so much to think about here and so many ways to demonstrate our allyship but it is so important to be conscious about it to be able to be inclusive um, <laughs> so what should I do now sorry I was getting on a bit of a rant and I don't want to be ranty this is like a positive thing what should I do now check how accessible your website is because every single person deserves to be able to use it the World Wide Web Consortium um, has a load of tools listed um, on there that you can use to check the website. So you want to make sure that people with screen readers can use it properly. So you'd be looking at the CSS and alt tags and things like that. You also want to check that the font and the text and the colours you're using are accessible. There's so many things that go into it, and I'm pretty sure there's other talks about that today. So I'm not going to go too much into web accessibility, but that's the first place you need to start with your website. The next thing you should do is review your target audience and put yourself in those shoes. If you look at your social feed, do you feel welcomed? Do you see yourself there or on the website in your adverts? You can take this further and do questionnaires for your target audience and ask them how your stuff makes them feel. But it's so important to really, really put yourself in their shoes and be incredibly analytical about it. It can be really hard when you're proud of work you've done to then feel like, oh it's not good enough because it's not inclusive um please don't feel like that please don't feel disheartened just think about how you can now level up and do do things better and more inclusive using what you've already learned from your other campaigns you need to be thoughtful about your visuals photos graphics videos everything going forward has to consider race and gender and age a 
ability, size, social economic status. There are so many things to think about, but it's fun like to think about it. It's exciting. You're like, you can give yourself a whole new level of being analytical about your work. Um, the next thing you should do is review your language and make sure it's not a barrier to your target audience. And so, and then avoid stereotypes. Uh, this is the fastest way for you to show people that you don't actually understand them. You know, remember empathy and respect. And if we talk about language, so I'm, if we look at say Kraken Marketing's messaging, I talk in slang a lot. I use memes, I use GIFs, I use a lot of pop culture references. And I know that alienates potential audiences. Um, but with other people, it makes them like my stuff and think I'm probably the right, per the sort of person that they want to do business with. So it's also kind of working as a first barrier of, because I'm a bit sweary and uh, so is my website and this is how I speak. So I'm aware who I'm alienating with it. And it's not um, like one whole demographic, it's people from like all demographics but the people that it resonates with are my kind of people. So that's like a conscious thing about my language. So I'm not saying that you have to speak to everybody, but you need to be inclusive of all demographics. Um, I hope that makes sense. And it is, it's exciting. This is fun. This is something really meaty and chunky for you to get stuck into and work hard on and know that you're actually making a really positive difference. And, you know, marketing is all about connecting people with products and services. But effective marketing is about bringing people together and embracing inclusivity will help you make a real difference in people's lives and your business bank balance. Make it rain, yo. <laughs> um, because also, at the end of the day, we're all here to make money as well. So it's, it's a financially smart choice for your business to embrace that inclusivity. So I just want to say thank you and let's continue to be more awesome and say no to vanilla. Thanks so much, guys.